All right, good morning, Bree. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Oregon Zoo Live. My name's Bree, and you're meeting Bebeto, our prehensile tailed porcupine. So today you'll absolutely get a chance to ask some questions about Bebeto. And also we're gonna have some activities that you can do. So please make sure to check out those activities and uh, follow along with those. I do wanna say you may be able to hear some construction in the background, which is good news because we are still being able to get that polar bear passage uh, construction going. So you might hear that for a little bit. And you'll also notice that I am wearing a mask. All of us are healthy, the animals and the keepers, but it is one thing that we wanna make sure that we stay healthy. So this is just a precautionary measure. And before we start with the uh, rest of this, I do want to say thank you to everybody for your support. Uh, we, are, we couldn't do this without you and we're so appreciative. Um, and you can, as you are watching this, click on and help donate here to the Oregon Zoo. So Elle's asking, what is Bebedo eating? Oh, Elle, that is a great question. So right now they are ones that uh, eat yams here. We get yam and we also get a variety of root vegetables. You may also see that we might give him peanuts. Uh, so he gets a variety of stuff here. Uh, and there is another piece of sweet potato for him. And for the folks just tuning in, um, what is Bebedo? Bebeto is a prehensile tailed porcupine. They're from Central and South America, and that tail is what they need because they're tree climbers. So, uh, Brant is asking um, where they live. I know a lot of you just mentioned where, where they're from. Can you tell us about the habitat that they live in? Sure, Brant. So this is one where absolutely they love to be in that tree canopy in the rainforest area. So they're gonna, you're gonna see them in Brazil in those uh, great places where you have all that rainforest area is where we mainly find them. So what's, our, what's the difference between uh, the Beto, a prehensile tailed porcupine, and the, the North American porcupines that live here? Sure, they are both ones that are here, um, but you can maybe be able to see a little difference. The main thing is that tail. So the North American porcupines do not have that long tail. Uh, the North American also ones have a lot more fur. Uh, they both have quills. You just can't see the North American ones as much because they need that extra layer of fur versus down in the rainforest. It's nice and warm, so they don't have to have that. So speaking of quills, Beckett and Lucas want to know if Bebeto or prehensile tailed porcupines use their quills for defense. Becca and L Lucas, they absolutely do. That is their main defense. Now it is a myth that porcupines can shoot their quills. They're actually just modify hairs that are loosely attached to their bodies. Um, Caden's asking, how long does this species live? What's their lifespan? Oh, Caden, so for how long they live, out in their native range, uh, getting into the early 20s, teens is pretty old for them. Uh, in human care, they tend to live longer. The longest that I've heard is 27. And Bebeto is only, well, he'll be eight in August. Um, Milo and Oliver are asking, um, why oh if they're solitary or if they live in groups milo and oliver all right so solitary or groups they tend to be solitary now mom when they have a baby uh, which is called a porcupette which is a super cute name they will be together for about the first six months but after that they're pretty much on their own mike mikey's asking about the whiskers can you tell us why he has these long whiskers Ah, Mikey, yes, those are great. So those actually help him figure out where he is and it helps sense uh, around his area um, to make sure. I always think kind of like when people think of cats, um, same kind of concept. Uh, Liam's asking if porcupines can roll up into a ball, like a pangolin. Oh, Liam, I have heard that if they really need to defend themselves, um, that they can do that because then it protects their belly and then it has the outside where it's all spikes. Hendrick is asking, how fast is Bebeto? Hendrick, how fast? Um, he doesn't tend to go very fast. Um, they want to use those quills um, as their defense. Otherwise, they like to be nice and slow and just hang out in the tree. Um, I've never clocked how fast he goes, maybe a couple miles an hour. 
Dara is asking if he has fur or just quills. And can you tell us a little bit more about what quills are? Sure. So Dara, you know what? It's really hard he, to see. He has a few little bit of hairs uh, underneath his belly and whatnot. But most of those hairs are just those modified quills. And the quills are ones that are just like our hair, but they've turned into a defense for them. And they're ones that if they do feel threatened, they'll puff up to twice their size and they'll back into anything that's threatening them. And because they're so loosely attached, that is when they will lose them. They also if uh, lose their hair just like we do. So every day we find a few quills here and there. Sophia's asking if they have a good sense of smell. Oh, Fia, yes, absolutely, they do. So their nose, you can see, is quite large on them. Their eyesight is not so good, um, but they use that sense of smell so they can search for their food in the rainforest. And Grace and Ella are asking, uh, what their favorite snacks are, what their Ooh. favorite things to eat are. So Grace and Ella, I think here uh, his favorite snack is peanuts. That's one of his favorite things that he likes to eat here. For vegetable wise, uh, definitely he likes the beet and he likes sweet potato, yam. Those are the things that he likes. Cindy wants to know if his tummy is fuzzy. <laughs> so Cindy, you know what? It's not really fuzzy. It definitely is not sharp like the rest of uh, the quills on his body. Um, it's very, very coarse hair. Lily's asking what these porcupines predators are. So Lily, out in their natural range, one of the main and one of the few animals that can actually get them is the jaguar. Most animals uh, have learned that it is really hard because of those quills and they leave them alone. Bridget's asking how much he sleeps and where does he sleep? So Bridget, they are ones that uh, tend to be out at nighttime a little more often out in their natural range. And so they actually will sleep in the tree canopy. But Beto here at the zoo, we've built him his own little tree canopy. And because he doesn't have to worry about foraging for food, we uh, get it for him. He doesn't mind being awake a little bit during the daytime. So. Can you tell us, uh, Bree, a little bit about his tail? He has this long tail, and of course his species is named prehensile-tailed porcupine. Can you tell us a little bit about this tail? Yeah, so that tail helps them when they're climbing in the rainforest canopy. They'll actually use it to wrap around trees to steady themselves. Um, so that makes it so they can reach out to get different fruits and branches when they're eating. And what does prehensile mean? Well, it is one that actually they can use to grip on to things. So uh, it does help with balance, but it, he has great strong muscles in there. So he can use that kind of like a fifth limb. Ella is asking, how long is his tail? Oh, Ella, that one I have not measured. I would say it's probably about a foot and a half or so. So about almost a little bit more than his uh, whole body length. So Misha is asking, do they ever eat meat? Misha, you know what? I have never seen that out of our porcupine, but I have seen some research saying occasionally they might eat insects or rodents, but that is not their main diet. They definitely are eating things like trees and branching and fruits off that they can get in the, that canopy. So Lily's asking how he got his name. Lily, he got his name, Babeto, from the soccer player, so the Brazilian soccer player. Um, he has uh, retired, but uh, if you uh, know anything about the Brazilian soccer player, you know about Babeto, so that's how he got his name. Daphne's asking if they can swim. Uh, you, you know what? There has been uh, where if they need to, um, that is not something that they naturally do. Um, but their quills are actually hollow, so it keeps them nice and buoyant. So if they do need to cross rivers and uh, they can. Sue's asking if all species of porcupines climb trees. Sue, you know what? Not all species do. So we also here at the Oregon Zoo have our African crested porcupines and they stay 100% on the ground. So it just depends on which porcupine. Some love the trees, some will be in the trees and on the ground, and some are just ground only. So Ashton is asking, is he like a chinchilla? Can you tell us what porcupines are related to? And... Sure, Ashton. So porcupines are actually related to the rodent family. So they have those ever long growing front and uh, bottom teeth. And so he uh, needs to wear those down like all other rodents do. And Blakely is asking if he loses his quills, will they grow back? 
Blakely, yes. So it's just like our hair. If you have it where you lose some of your hair, it grows right back. So he does the same thing. Jocelyn wants to know how old Bebeto is. Jocelyn, he is almost eight. So he'll turn eight in August. Lily's asking, does he eat dairy? Maybe those <laughs> look like a little bit like cheese sticks. They do. <laughs> so that's actually a golden beet and they are ones that don't uh, eat dairy. And we have a lot of folks who, have, who had missed this earlier, but they're asking where, where do they live? What's their range? Sure. So South America, um, so prehensile tailed porcupine and this one specifically Bebeto. And so they live in the tree canopies of Central and South America. So we had some questions about babies. Um, can you tell us what, again what baby porcupines are called and how the parents take care of them? Sure. So the babies have a really cute name called porcupets. I encourage you after this to research uh, what they look like. They don't look anything like the adults. They are born with very soft quills and they also have this burnt orange uh, baby fur to them. They are really, really cute. Um, and in just a few hours, their quills start to harden um, and they transition from having that orange fuzz to losing all that. And then the quills harden and you'll notice the quills. Um, and by the age of six months is when they decide to leave mom um, and they're kind of on their own after that. Darian's asking how, how high up the tree will they climb? Well, you know what? That is a great question. And they are ones that uh, they can go as high as the tree can hold them. Bebeto is about 11 pounds, which is an average size for a prehensile tail porcupine. So if the branch is not going to hold them, they're not going to go any higher. So as you said before, prehensile tailed porcupines like Bebeto need trees to survive. They live in the forest. What are some ways people can help protect uh, Bebeto's habitat? Sure, so one thing that you can do right here um, is a couple easy things, is when you are getting coffee, to look for something that is, it has like a bird friendly symbol or shade grown coffee. So that ensures that we can have our coffee and also we can make sure that they have their rainforest canopy. Also another great thing that you can do is go things like Meatless Monday, uh, a lot of our cattle is raised down in South America. So if we eat less meat, there'll be more rainforest for them. We have some folks asking where they can see Bebeto when the zoo opens back up again. Bebeto is part of our animal ambassadors. So we will hopefully be able to have him out. It all depends on what phase we're at. Um, he does do uh, our stage performances and he also is one that is part of our programs that we do in the discovery room. And so hopefully you'll be seeing him out and about during the summertime. So we're gonna take one last question. It's from Arthur. On a scale of one to 10, how cute is Bebeto? Oh, Arthur, he's a 10. Absolutely. He is definitely very cute. Well, thanks so much, Bree, for introducing us to Bebeto. Absolutely. And thanks to everybody for joining us for our Oregon Zoo Live. Absolutely don't forget to do those activities. And when you're done with those activities, post them up and do the comments so we can see them. And we want to say thank you. And thanks for Bebeto for coming out.